Shabbat Shalom. In this week's parasha, Parashat Chaye Sarah, we open with the tragic passing of Sarah at the age of 127 years old. Avram, struck by grief, heads to the city of Hebron to acquire for himself a burial spot for, uh, for Sarah. And in his negotiations with the Bnei Chet, with the local residents, he let slip a, a line that is key to understanding what it means to be a Jewish. In his description, he uses the phrase, Ger v'toshav anochi amachem. I am a ger, a stranger, v'toshav, and a resident amongst you. And immediately you, are, you have to ask yourself the question, I don't understand, who is Abraham? Is he a toshav? Is he a resident? Is he a citizen of the community? In which case, he has certain rights. Or is he a ger, a stranger, an outsider? Who exactly is Abraham? Rabbi Soloveitchik, one of his magnificent essays, describes the following. That Abraham, the first Jew, represents, is the quintessential Jew. Every single one of us has this feeling of ger v'toshav. On the one hand, we feel comfortable. We are part of this world. We are part of our communities. We work, we get our degrees, we enter the workforce, we contribute to society. On the other hand, comes Friday afternoon, we suddenly have to stop what we're doing and say, sorry, I have to pause now. Why? Because Shabbat is coming. And I separate from my friends, from my work colleagues. Shabbat has entered. I separate. I'm a stranger. Come, let's go have a meal. Yes, I'd love to. I'm sorry, we can't eat together. It's not kosher. We have some strange rules that separates us. And this is the tension that every single Jew is going to have to experience. Ger v'toshav, the stranger and the residents. But it is this concept of ger v'toshav that has sustained the Jew throughout the centuries. We want to be toshav. We want to be a resident. We want to, be, we want to contribute. It is part of our culture, part of our DNA to make the world a better place. Heal the world, make it a better place, bring godliness into the world. And thus, is it any surprise that we find so many Jews involved in the areas of medicine, of economics, of biology, of science, trying to make the world just that little bit better for all its, all its residents and all the inhabitants. But on the other hand, we have unique culture, a unique identity. We are Jews. We have Shabbat, we have Kashrut, we have Torah, we have our studies, we have our prayers. We journey with the world, but there are times we have to pause and separate. This idea is beautifully expressed in the Arcada, where Avram marches with two boys, with the chamor, with the donkey. And he turns to the uh, with Yitzchak, and he turns to the boys and says, what do you see over there in the distance? They say, we see a mountain. And he turns to Yitzchak and says, what do you see, Yitzchak? And Yitzchak says, I see a cloud, a nun, a holy cloud on the, on the mountain. Avram turns to the two, uh, the two boys with him and says, I have to stop the journey now. I'm going to walk up the mountain with my son Yitzchak. We're going to pray to God and then I'll return back to you. That represents who we are as Jews. We'll journey with you. And uh, to make the world a better place, but then comes Shabbat, we will stop, we will separate, and then we will come back. But the important thing is, when we have this, uh, this, uh, this separated time, that is what gives us the energy. That's what feeds our soul, which inspires us. When a person is a Toshav, is a resident, one becomes, one becomes used to the status quo. But if you're a stranger and an outsider and you're looking in, you go, well, this can be improved, that can be improved. And this is the secret of what it means to be Jewish. Ger v'toshav. We use our unique ability, our unique culture, our unique religion, our unique experience to make the world a little bit better. We are gerim. We are strangers. We are not going to be, we are not going to be uh, uh, so, uh, subjected to the whims of society. We're not going to be seduced by them because we have our own cultural identity, which we are proud of and we wish to share. When a Jew is proud of who they are, that you can, be, you can expect that the non-Jew will respect you too. This week, we mark the, tra the, the tragic passing 
of Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, a true mentor for all, a rabbi who transcended the bounds, the boundaries of being merely a rabbi. He became not just our rabbi, the rabbi of, of Great Britain, chief rabbi of, of, of the British Commonwealth. He was not just the rabbi of Jewish communities around the world. For 25 years, his lectures, his talks, we have inspired so many. All you have to do is type in Rabbi Sachs on YouTube and there are so many wonderful, inspiring lessons and lectures by Rabbi Sachs. But it was a coffee that I had this afternoon with the local, pri with the local priest that really uh, struck home the influence that Rabbi Sachs has. He says to me, I heard the tragic news that Rabbi Sachs had passed away. You should know that just this weekend, I used one of his books when I wrote my, uh, my homily, my sermon for my community. Rabbi Sachs uh, transcended. He brought the values of Judaism to the world, the wider community, the world, uh, the world as a whole. He was a voice. He was an Abraham. And if ever there was a role model and some that we can look up to and be inspired by, it is that Rabbi Sachs walked in the footsteps of Abraham. Agar Vitoshav. He was a resident of the world. He was cultured. He had the philosophy. He was respected. And he was respected because he was, a, because he was different. He was respected as a Jew. A Jew who loved his Judaism, was passionate about his Judaism, wore it on his sleeve, and the world respected him for who he was. A Nasi Betochenu, a prince amongst us. Woe to us that we have lost such a leader. We are blessed that he's left such a legacy via YouTube, via his books, via his lectures, and via the personal inspiration. We have a long way to go to even, to, to even rekindle the flame that has been extinguished with the passing of Rabbi Sachs. Long may his, value, may his thoughts, his lectures, his teachings be an inspiration. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom.